Hello, welcome to today's Lightboard Tech Talk. We're going to be talking about load balancing object storage. Now you may be thinking to yourself, storage? We don't load balance storage solutions. That doesn't make sense. And for some of the traditional storage systems like file storage, that might be the case. Because file storage has a hierarchical system in terms of how the files are stored. And you can't have redundant systems servicing those files and do it easily and functionally. That's why the traditional storage systems use clusters instead of load balancing. Meanwhile, object storage is different. With object storage, I have a file or an object. And this object can be a text file, it can be an image, it can be a Word document, it can be a video. So for example, I have this Lightboard Tech Talk video. And that's my object. And I'm going to store it in the object storage system. And it has a flat file structure. There is no hierarchy or anything in terms of how the file is stored. The object storage system knows where the file is and what it is because the file name, the date stamp, and also they have what we call metadata. This metadata is important because it's like the hashtag in social media. They are values that you associate with this object that tell you about this object. For example, for my Lightboard Tech Talk video, I might have that metadata that has Lightboard. I might have metadata that says Tech Talk, Object Storage, and etc. And now the operating system of this object storage solution can find this object for me when I request it based on the file name, the date stamp, and the various metadata. So I can look for certain things just like hashtags for them to be able to find the objects related to it. So this is pretty cool. So if I have my object storage system, I'm going to build what I call a node. And this node is my object storage system and it has storage on it where it stores the files. But this node is the object storage operating system which I can connect to and push and pull files from or objects from the system. Now the cool thing is I can scale by adding more nodes. I can add another node and I'm going to add a third node. And these nodes communicate with each other because they're all within the same system. So they are talking to each other and share this flat file system with all the objects. So I can connect to any node and push or pull any object across, no matter which node it sits on. They're essentially redundant in terms of the functionality that they host. So the cool thing here is, man, this sounds a lot like a standard application server pool. So I'm going to take my load balancer and I'm going to load balance those nodes. I'm going to have a virtual IP address or a virtual service and my clients are going to access these nodes through the load balancer. Very cool. So the protocol that the clients use to access the nodes is called, the most common one I should say, it's called S3. Almost everybody uses S3. S3 stands for Simple Storage Service. It was created by Amazon with AWS many years ago and is a very popular protocol for object storage. Now the really cool thing is that S3 depends upon or uses HTTP or HTTPS if it's encrypted. So as a load balancer, we think to ourselves, wow, it's HTTP. I can do all the things load balancing for HTTP. I can now do it for object storage in S3. So I can do persistence. I can do content switching. I can do all sorts of cool things in terms of address translation. I can add security functionality. 
And this is a real bonus to be able to provide low bouncing functionality for object storage. Now I'm gonna take this one location here and I'm gonna call this data center New York. And me being a good IT citizen in terms of how I design things, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna build a second data center. And I'm gonna call it Las Vegas. And within this data center, I'm gonna build, you guessed it, three nodes where there is associated storage. And if I need to expand, of course, I can add more nodes and more storage easily. And in this data center, I'm gonna put my load balancer also. So now I have my two data centers. And when we have two data centers, there's usually two things that we can do in terms of how we split the traffic across it. One is what we call active-active, where both data centers are live at the same time and we can connect to both and they're functional. And the other one is active-standby. Active-standby is also commonly known or more commonly known even as disaster recovery. So I can create an active active or disaster recovery with my object storage solution using load balancers. And the really cool thing again here is I can take a load balancer and stick it up here virtually. It could be in the data centers also. And I'm going to use global server load balancing technology, GSLB. If you've seen some of the previous Lightboard tech talks, you've I've described GSLB where it's DNS manipulation for multi-site availability. And we can use GSLB to direct the clients in an active-active or active standby scenario automatically. So now I'm fully leveraging the load balancer functionality with local load balancing in each data center, global load balancing for site availability, active-active or disaster recovery. And I can add more cool functions because the object storage system between the two sites, it's gonna provide some sort of synchronization or connectivity so that the two sites know what's going on with each other. So this could look like one giant pool or it could be synchronized to be redundant pools. And now I can use the load balancer to direct traffic to one location if we're, if we're not doing the replication because if I connect, look for a file and the file sits in the Las Vegas data center and I connect to New York, the node has to go to Las Vegas, pull the file and then deliver it to me across this backend connection. May not be the most efficient. We can do cool things in terms of hashing and content switching other things and matching to direct the traffic to the data center where the file is located. There's lots of other cool things we can do with object storage with load balancing because it is this S3 protocol, HTTPS, and this flat storage system using objects and metadata that we can see and deal with on the load balancing arena in terms of its layer seven capabilities, that there's a lot of cool things that you can do where it really makes sense now for load balancing to be included in any object storage solution that you build. So hopefully this was useful in terms of a quick overview of object storage and load balancing and how load balancing impacts object storage in a positive way. And certainly go to the Kemp YouTube channel, subscribe and look at other Lightboard Tech Talk videos and hopefully I'll be seeing you real soon. Thank you very much.